Hi, this is Samantha Garrow with Nursing Ruby Sue. Um, I am here to talk about remedies for posterior tongue tie releases. So there's a couple of things I want to go over with you about getting your remedies ready uh, for the pain management part of it. Um, some things that you will need, I use a glass dropper bottle. Um, I use bioplasma cell salts. Now there are 12 cell salts that are essential for your cells to um, perform optimally. However, you only really need about four or five of the 12 for tongue tie release. But instead of buying them all individually and opening up all those bottles individually and making your dosages that way, I just buy the bioplasma that has all 12 in it, including the four or five that you need. So you'll need that. You'll need your homeopathic remedies. There's three of them that are um, needed. There's Byronia, which is for pain with movement. So this is where the baby is fine with the tongue stationary in the bottom of their mouth, but as soon as they go to swallow, it hurts. So then they don't want to nurse or they don't want to take a bottle. Um, you, you would That's what Byronia is for. There's also Arnica, which is for general inflammation and bruising. And then there's Hypericum, which is for nerve pain. So those are the three um, ones that I use. Now, there are other remedies out there that you can add to this. Um, there's graphites for scarring. There's other remedies for trauma, different things like that. That depends between, that's between you and your lactation consultant and your homeopathic practitioner. Um, but these are the main three that I use, and then I also get Rescue Remedy. Um, you can use the Adult Rescue Remedy, but it does have ethyl alcohol in it, so you'll have to um, make that judgment call on your own. I prefer the kids one, just so that's not an issue. Um, I've been told that even using the Adult Remedy, um, sorry, the Adult version of Rescue Remedy, that it's not um, too terribly large of an issue because it's such a small amount of alcohol in it. Um, but that's just your call as a parent as to what you feel most comfortable with. So I um, want to talk next about the difference between tablets and pellets. So when you buy um, your remedies, you will want to get, um, I use 30C. Um, when you get 30C or 6C or 200C, the C dosages typically come in pellets not tablets. So what's the difference? Okay, so a tablet, you would be familiar with tablets if you use teething tablets by Highlands. Highlands mostly uses tablets. So this is a Highlands um, remedy and, and it comes in these little tiny dissolvable tablets. They're, they dissolve instantly. So they are great for babies because you put them in their mouth, when they go to spit it out it dissolves instantly so they can get the remedy. And the remedy is in the tablet and that's why the tablets are instantly dissolvable so that it guarantees the baby gets them. Now pellets are not instantly dissolvable. Pellets come in bottles similar to this. It's not instantly dissolvable but the baby does not have to ingest the pellet and I'll explain why. The remedy is not inside the pellet, it's on the outside of the pellet. So even if you need to give a baby a remedy such as this and you don't have the ability to mix it with water like we're going to do in just a minute, it's not that big of a deal. You can still put it in the baby's mouth. Even if they spit it out, it's okay because the remedy got in their mouth um, because the remedy is just on the outside. However, what that does mean is that it comes in these weird bottles. So if you take the cap off of these bottles, nothing comes out of it, okay? So the way that you get the tablets out, I mean, sorry, the pellets out is that you turn it upside down and you're going to twist it. And as you twist it, they're going to fall down into the cap. So you can see it right there, pellets in the cap. All right? So um, if you're an adult taking these, what you'll do is you'll pop the cap off and you'll just put this straight into your mouth, okay? You cannot touch it with your fingers. You cannot put them in your hands. If you touch them with your fingers or your hands, it's no good because the remedy will get on your fingers and hands and it won't get in your mouth to be ingested. So this is important. So when we're making our remedies in our glass dropper bottle, what you'll wanna do is just pour it straight down into the bottle like that. So, and you'll put however many you need for your dosage in here. So while we're talking about this with our dosage bottle, so what I do is um, I determine ahead of time how many doses of the remedy I'm going to make at once. So however many doses, let's say I'm making five doses, I get five dropperfuls of water and I put five in there. Two, three, four, 
five. Okay. Then I take five dosages of bioplasma, five dosages of arnica, five dosages of byronia, five dosages of hypericum, and I put them all in here. And then I put uh, five dosages of rescue remedy in here. Okay. So I just put them all in here. Put the lid on. Now, even though the 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 tablets from Bioplasma will dissolve immediately. So you don't have to worry about that. And Rescue Remedy is already liquid. It'll mix with the liquid in the water. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, the pellets from the, um, the homeopathic remedies, they're not going to dissolve instantaneously. Um, they will dissolve eventually. Um, but they don't have to dissolve. So you can still use this right away, even though the, ta the pellets may not be dissolved already. Because as soon as they hit the water... The remedy comes off of the outside of the pellet and mixes with the water. Um, and then when I go to give a dosage to my baby, I use one dropper full. And that's, and then I have five in here. Hopefully that explains it to you how to do this. And if you have any questions, just send me a message. Thank you.